Oh my gosh. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Carl, and thanks so much for joining me today for what's my first live broadcast for the Sketchy Art School. And um, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm pretty nervous and um, sweaty palmed. And right now in um, Cape Town, South Africa, where I am, it's seven o'clock at night. Um, so uh, cheers to you. And um, I'm going to just have to take a little sip of a little bit of Dutch courage here. Sorry. Mm. All right, Ruby. Um, cool. So I'm just looking to another screen to my left hand side and I just want to see where uh, Hugh's here and um, Hugh's logging on. Uh, it'd be great to know where you're all from. Annette, hi there. You're in Berlin. Brilliant. Shelia in Maine, US. Hi there, Polly. Wow, this is seriously overwhelming. Super, super nervous. Um, <laughs> so we're going to have quite a little bit of um, fun here today. And um, for those of you who have um, tuned in today in the 30 Faces 30 Days, you'll see that I'm one of the teachers in um, this month's pencil, uh, the graphite tutorial. And um, had a heck of a lot of fun with that today with um, the muse who I'll show you the, the work again now that um, I did for today's class. I've seen some amazing um, portraits coming through um, that everybody else has been putting together. So to those of you who followed in the 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge, um, I know it's daunting. I've taken part in these challenges before when you try and kind of find a little gap every day to do more and more of these, um, well, just to be creative and have a little bit of time to have good fun kind of arting along. Um, so just keep at it. That's all I can say. It's, it seems like a lot, 30 faces in 30 days, but um, trust me, you can get through it. And what's really amazing is that at the end of the month of January, or whenever you finish, you're going to have a, you know, 30 pages of a sketchbook um, that detail the creative journey much, um, you know, that show your kind of progress as an artist. Um, that's essentially 30 steps ahead of where you were at the beginning of the month. So really, honestly, guys, keep at it. Just want to have a look at a few more of the comments coming in. Uh, we'll get onto uh, the live uh, stream pretty shortly. Emily, I see you got your cup of coffee. Brilliant. Hey there, Daryl. Cindy, yeah, all my little uh, Funko Pops in the background. I've uh, got a little bit of a crazy obsession going on there. Lisa from Rhode Island, how are you doing? Brilliant. Wow, this is, um, it's daunting, but amazing to see so many comments and people coming in from um, all over the world. And um, yeah, it's, uh, so I'm going to do my very best today to, uh, um, entertain you along the way with uh, some creative practices that I'm, to be honest with you, I might, I'm going to be trying for the first time as well. So um, I'm not sure how many of you might know, um, but I'm going to be from February, I've got a class coming up um, called Painting Portraits with Carl Staub. And that class is going to have eight lessons in um, essentially just uh, painting portraits along the way using different materials. Um, the whole point of that class is, again, similar to the 30 Faces, 30 Days proposition. It really is about kind of overcoming the challenge of finding a little bit of time every day where you can um, get creative and splash some paint around and just have fun with portraiture. And um, so in these eight lessons in the class, if you subscribe to that, which I hope you will, um, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to be using materials um, that are inexpensive. So watercolor, gouache and acrylic paints. And um, yeah, there's going to be one or two other kind of little kind of surprise moments in there as well. But um, all the materials are the kind of things that you can get at your local kind of stationery shop. So it, nothing, you don't have to go out and spend a fortune on expensive art materials. 
the point to the class um, when you subscribe to it is really just to have fun along the way and experiment with different techniques. So um, I'm going to see if you can just kind of forgive me. I'm going to scratch around on my desktop here and see if I can pull up a promo video. Um, Sketchy put together a really cool little video of that. Where would that be now? Eek. Why is that not coming up? Ah, no, that's definitely not it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, my gosh. Technologically challenged. All right, something's happening. Something's happening. Bear with me. Painting a portrait sounds daunting, doesn't it? Well, as someone who creates large-scale paintings, I know it can be daunting. But in this class, I'm going to show you how you can make portrait painting part of your everyday life and enjoy the experience along the way. I'm Carl Staub, a painter from Cape Town, South Africa. I've got two kids, I've got a full-time job, so I know how crazy it can be trying to find time in the day to get a little bit of painting done. In this class, we're going to overcome that challenge by painting eight portraits together. Using just an A4 sketchbook, we'll spend about 60 to 90 minutes on each portrait, enjoying the experience and embracing the results. We're going to use all kinds of fun paints, watercolor, gouache, acrylic. We're even going to use coffee and red wine. Along the way, I'll share tips and techniques gathered from my more than 20 years experience as a painter. So let's paint portraits together in the Sketchy Art School. And we're back. Okay, brilliant. I think I actually managed to get that to work. Woohoo! Sorry, that deserves another little sip. Mm. All right, if you can hear noises in the background, sorry guys, I've got two dogs and cats. They're running up and down, going through dog flaps. Yep, there goes Dexter barking. Um, <laughs> nothing I can do about that. But we're 15 minutes in, and um, honestly, I think let's get cracking and um, start having some fun. So let me show you what I've got on my desk now. Um, hockey dogs. All right, so this is the completed sketch from the class that I did of the 30 faces, 30 days today. Um, the muse uh, was Gerard F. Um, let me just see if I can just quickly pop his reference image onto the screen. Um, sorry, computer is hanging. Okay. Let me just scale that, sorry. And goodbye, Wonder Woman. Gonna have to cover you up there. Okay, so. Oh, come on, dogs. Anyway, so super fun sketching this um, particular image. And um, what you'll, if you follow the class today, you'll see that, you know, I, at the time I only completed half the sketch. Since then, I've actually taken it a lot further and. Um, uh, hatched out and really kind of went crazy and completed the full graphite image. So what I'd actually like to do now is kind of a celebration of the class that I'm going to be giving uh, for the painting side of things is, well, let's actually, I want to paint over this um, and see what happens if I start mixing acrylic paint on top of the graphite. A little bit of a kind of a technical thing. Um, when I did the sketch, it was on quite a low grammage uh, paper. So because I'm going to be putting paint on top of this now, and I don't want the paper to buckle and go all over the place, I took the page and um, I bought some triplex, um, some good thick car cardboard stock. And with a bit of spray glue, I stuck the page onto that and gave it some time to set. Um, and then what I did as well, so that the paint doesn't um, smush all of the graphite around as I'm working on it, or at least I'm hoping that's going to be the case or not be the case. Um, I took a lot of fixative and um, gave, a, gave the graphite a good spray with some fixative. But um, honestly, if you've 
if you've got some good old fashioned hairspray lying around the house, you can use that as well. And then let that set. And then it gets to a point where even where you've gone kind of quite thick and heavy on the graphite lead, um, once you kind of rub over with your fingers, you'll see it doesn't actually come off anymore. So fingers crossed, we should be able to put acrylic paints on here without doing too much damage. Um, you'll see what I've done with uh, the picture of Gerard there is I've given it a bit of a blue tint because um, his original image was black and white. And because we're going to be working with these acrylics today, I figured let's kind of work with a limited palette. So let's do something a little bit on the kind of the on the blue side. So in terms of color choices, I've got a Prussian blue hue, ultramarine, which is kind of the go to kind of blue acrylic. Um, I've got a bit of powder blue and white. So all that's going to happen is I'm going to bang a couple of these. This really kind of gets a nice thick kind of gloopy bits of paint onto the, uh, I've just got another piece of cardboard here, no kind of fancy palettes or anything like that. So smashing in some ultramarine. And excuse me, I'm just going to move the tubes of paint off camera just to save a little bit of space. All right, let's bring that up there. Some powder blue. And bang in a bit of white. Alrighty. So there's, oops, our four tubes of, sorry, four colors there. And I think what I want to do is have a little bit of fun with this and kind of just see what would happen if we actually isolate part of the portrait, keep some of it graphite and paint the rest in acrylic. So um, what I've done is I've just got a sheet of paper here. Let me just move this aside for a little bit. Just got a sheet of paper that I am going to is effectively isolate half of the pencil sketch and then just using a little bit of kind of um, kind of low tack paper tape I'm going to stick that stick this down let me just go a little bit further up I see I'm moving off camera a bit there we go Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to be painting over here and effectively this portion of the artwork is going to stay the graphite. Having a little bit of fun with it and seeing what kind of what's going to happen. So I've got a couple of different brushes here. Um, nothing too kind of outrageous, um, predominantly thin brushes. The one that I'm going to be using the most, I think, is a small um, four millimeter chisel tip. So that's that one, and then I'll put the others aside there. I like to have a kind of a plethora of brushes lying around, just so that I've got options as I work, as opposed to being too limited. Um, I like to limit the paint, ironically, but you know, the more kind of application tools you've got, the better. And then, sorry, I'm just reaching to the side and bringing in my little jar of water. Okay. So let's have a little bit of fun with Gerard. So putting a bit of water on the brush now, grabbing some of the Prussian blue, I'm going to start essentially with the hair and really kind of quite thickly and very liberally just, just pop in that Prussian blue all the way across the, the hairline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid covering the areas right now that are lighter. Um, where I went lighter, that show the kind of the texture of, of our muse's hair. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a space there. And I'm just going to kind of bang in some in the darker areas, really kind of get 
get quite heavy with this Prussian blue. I tell you, after spending ages and ages and ages working on a sketch like this, um, <laughs> it's pretty weird to, uh, to effectively be erasing it now with paint. And guys, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'm aiming that we should be done in about kind of, hopefully about half an hour or so. So by all means, kind of bear with me or, you know, hopefully I'm not going to, I hope I'm not boring you guys to death. Sorry, my heart is beating so fast. I haven't done this. Freaking out. Glass of wine. Mm. All right, that's going down well. Maybe a little bit too well. Okay, um, taking a bit of powder blue, mixing that into the Prussian, and I'm going to now start filling in just very roughly, indicating the, the lighter areas of the hairline. I'm working really kind of thick. I'm not trying to go for a very realistic, um, defined style. The, the whole point of this exercise is I want to be able to achieve effectively a multimedia artwork very quickly. Um, so I'm going to be working kind of quite kind of loose and almost sketch like with the paint, not worrying too much initially about how the paint is finding its way onto the page. Interesting what I'm, what you're seeing on camera is definitely a lot lighter than what's actually coming through on uh, what I'm seeing in reality. So it's a very much lighter. Um, but so the contrasts between what I'm seeing on screen, what you guys are seeing versus what's in front of me is a little bit different. So just bear with me on the color usage. So cleaning the brush off. So really um, just kind of being kind of quite loose and kind of generous with the paint in the hairline. Then picking up on the same Prussian blue, I want to start with the, the darker areas of the forehead. Mapping out the actual, essentially what's darker in a very similar fashion to the way that I approached the sketch in today's tutorial, where I um, really kind of blocked in areas of kind of very dark versus much lighter, uh, kind of the mid-tone area, sorry, and then uh, working my way to kind of lighter points. So essentially using the same mapping technique from today's course in the way that um, I'm applying the paint now. All I'm doing so far is mixing powder blue with Prussian blue to achieve slightly lighter tones. And when I work like this as well, um, I kind of tend to bounce around a lot. Um, so you'll notice that I don't tend to finish one area perfectly. I kind of uh, like to kind of lay down kind of really kind of thick paint, let it dry a little bit, and then come back to it with lighter tones as and when I need to. Okay, so I'm putting in a few of the, essentially just a couple of darker areas with the shadow where we find shadows around the glasses, popping in a bit of that, but I want to go back to the more mid-tone range of the forehead now and start building up some of those lighter colors. I really want to um, have kind of quite a, a loose, I want to feel a lot of brush stroke um, and see kind of a lot of just kind of mixtures and kind of mushiness of color coming through. Um, so I'm really kind of working with a, quite a lot of thick paint, applying this very quickly and um, filling in these kind of key areas. 
So I'm really not at this point trying to get too kind of caught up in, you know, is am I being perfect in terms of detail or application? You know, I kind of want this, I feel like I'm, I want to have this painting part have an expressive element to it. I want to bring a little bit of ultramarine into my color choice now. And that brings in a bit more of a kind of a royal blue as opposed to the kind of the grayness that's coming in. And maybe just a touch of white in that ultramarine just to highlight a few areas of difference. Okay, I'm going to pause there on the forehead. That's good enough for now. Man, it feels weird painting over the sketch. Golly. Let's get into the eye. <laughs> Sorry, my nerves. Can you see my hands shaking? Oh, man. Golly. All right, so I'm starting off with quite a lot of heavy kind of Prussian blue. Um, I feel like in the eye area, what I want to do is start with kind of quite a dark application. And then um, I can build that up with lighter colors. Uh, goodbye sketch. Golly, jeez. It's freaking me out, man. Okay. All right, so I'm literally just adding now the Prussian blue into the the eyelids and the areas around that as well, just letting my brush kind of just dance across the, essentially where in pencil in the graphite I've put down the very kind of dark, uh, dark tones. I'm going to leave the actual inside of the eye, uh, the pupil and the iris, I'm going to leave that for a little bit later when I'm feeling a bit braver. But for now I'm just kind of working on the kind of the outside sections. And I must be honest, I'm really kind of curious to know what's going to happen when we've actually covered all of this in paint, what it's going to look like compared to the, graph uh, the graphite image that's been left behind on the other half. I'm just pausing to kind of have a look at a few of the comments. Sorry, guys. I'm getting so caught up in what I'm doing here. I know that there's comments coming through. Um, and yep, absolutely. If, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try really hard to kind of respond to them as I go, but I'm kind of torn between screen over there, screen over here, painting over here, and um, gosh, the need for another one of these. Mm. Okie dokes. Let's carry on with that. Um, I saw one of the comments kind of, it looked like uh, somebody kind of guessed that in the uh, portrait painting promo that I showed earlier, somebody thought that perhaps one of the images was done with red wine. Yeah, busted. You got me. Definitely. In one of the classes. So yeah, we're going to be working with acrylic, uh, watercolor and gouache. Um, but then uh, we're also going to be playing around with red wine. We're even going to use coffee. So um, by all means, um, you know, join the class and see that you can have loads of fun with all sorts of different mediums. It doesn't have to be something that comes out of a tube. It can come out of a bottle or an espresso pod. Okay. Let's get the eye in. So I'm just letting the kind of the chisel tip now area of the brush just dance around those dark oppression blue points that I've put in. Um, 
I really want to do justice to Gerard's image. It was really such a kind of serene image uh, that was used. Absolutely love it. Okay, at the risk of overworking, I'm going to maybe just step away from the eye for now and let's bang in with the work on the nose and the cheek area. So that I'm working uh, deliberately around the glasses for now. The actual glasses I'll put in the detail, I think, uh, just toward the end. The reason for that is it's tempting to actually start with what might be the hardest part. I mean, glasses are, they can be a bit of a mare, a nightmare to kind of paint. But um, at the same time, they can also bring a portrait together. So instead of starting with that and getting too obsessed with the glasses, I'm working on all the areas around it, areas that are, that feel like I can kind of put down more kind of confident brush strokes so that when you get to areas that are more kind of tricky and potentially cumbersome, they kind of all just fall into place because you've actually done all the hard work already dealing with what's happening around it. So I'm just using the kind of the Prussian blue to fill in the deep shadows on the nose. So working around the frames of the glasses and then building in areas where the bridge meets, meets oops, excuse me, where it meets the, the nostrils. And then I'm going to take some of the lighter color where the Prussian blue was mixed with the powder blue and I'll start introducing the next level of tonality. Feels a little bit like it needs to go lighter than that. There we go. Again, working with kind of thick, kind of almost kind of globby application of paint here. Okay, so pretty much what's happened now is I've got a lot of shadow area and some mid-tone sitting on the actual image at the moment. There's um, definitely room for a lot more kind of tonal definition to come through. So I certainly will be adding that. I'm bringing in a little bit of ultramarine now because I'm feeling like maybe the Prussian blue and the use of the powder blue on its own was getting just that little bit too kind of it was getting a bit grayish so i want to kind of just warm things up a little bit with the ultramarine okay i'm getting a little bit too nose obsessed now so i'm going to put some more prussian blue back on the brush and get round to the cheek area so we got some really kind of hard dark areas coming in on the side so let's get some nice thick kind of really kind of juicy paint coming onto the paper here just pausing for a second I'm actually really happy with the way that um, I thought by now I'd be seeing buckling and the paper would be warping and doing all sorts of crazy things um, but definitely a little bit of spray glue with that page stuck onto some um, some kind of thick card stock that definitely helped keep things uh, nice and sturdy. Okay, so we got some dark, super dark areas happening. And they start bringing in the lighter cheek tones.
Elisa, yeah, um, you're quite right in your comment. Um, my paint palette, I'm not using anything fancy. I literally just tore off the same little bit of cardboard that I'm using to, that I applied um, behind the paper of the uh, original sketch. So um, again, I'm, I like to kind of, yeah, I'm one of those where I'll go to a stationery shop and spend an absolutely small fortune on materials. But at the same time, sometimes the stuff you just got kind of lying around the house, that works best. Okay. All right, so something interesting is starting to happen, but um, perhaps, I don't know, Still looking a little bit on the flat side of things, but um, we're going to resolve that as we essentially just keep applying more paint. Was I perhaps a little bit kind of um, a little bit of afraid of in this session painting <laughs> Gerard's hand and um, the actual his mouth area? Uh, maybe, maybe that's kind of why I chose to focus on this half. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, it would have been actually great if we had the time to essentially cover the whole sketch in paint. I'm really liking the way that so far the use of just four colors is really bringing some, bringing some interesting kind of life and tone to the sketch that was done today. I'm taking a bit of powder blue now and kind of quite liberally adding to the highlight area or the next area of highlights, sorry, in the nose. And then I'm going to pick up again on the same, bringing that powder blue, adding a little bit of white now into the cheek area. Oh, as soon as that little bit of white comes into that powder blue, something interesting starts happening. There's a levity that started to, starting to come through. nice you know the best kind of art I find is when you challenge yourself to do something crazy uh, or something you might not normally do like exactly this painting over a sketch that took ages and ages to do in the first place but sometimes just sometimes by taking little risks you uh, you certainly kind of um, find new techniques new kind of new doors opening up for yourself creatively. So that's kind of why you'll hear me mutter. I'm not kind of patting myself on the back by any means when I'm going, oh man, that looks cool. It really is just sometimes the best thing as an artist is when you actually get to surprise yourself. So what's happening in the eye area now is I'm playing around with little bits of highlights. I'm actually being kind of quite creatively um, doing, taking a bit of creative license. I'm looking at the reference image, but I'm not spending too much time looking at it. I'm actually letting my graphite sketch kind of dictate or what I can recall of my graphite sketch uh, kind of dictate what I need to be doing. So um, in terms of where those, the mapping of the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows needed to be. Hmm, okay. Uh, what are we missing? 
Okay, of course, we've got the other eye to do, but before we do that, I um, just want to see how we're doing for time. Okay, we're 43 minutes in. I did promise that hopefully this wasn't going to take longer than about 45 um, to an hour tops. So I'm going to kind of bang on and I'm going to look first at the eyebrow area, which on our reference is quite dark. So in there again with the Prussian blue, I'm just going to very liberally indicate the eyebrow. It's one of those things if you kind of put the paint down really kind of heavily and you feel like that was a mistake for whatever reason, that's a great thing about acrylic, just let it dry and you can paint over it. It's a very forgiving medium, especially when it comes to experimentation like we're doing here now. Okay, so I'm just kind of banging in eyebrow area and I want to get into that right hand eye. So again, as I did before, I'm starting in with a Prussian blue. Using just the tip of the brush to almost sketch in area of detail. Sketching in the shadows and key kind of areas that I'm going to be working over with lighter tones. Still saving the glasses for last because I promise you at this stage I'm feeling pretty confident that those uh, frames will actually go pretty pretty quickly. Okay, so mixing a little bit of ultramarine back into the Prussian blue powder blue mix. I'm going to be, still be focusing now on the skin area around that right hand eye. Just working around the little areas. What are those things on them? Um, maybe someone can answer this for me in the comments. When you're wearing a pair of glasses, the little plasticky bits that rest on the bridge of your nose, I can never remember what those are called. I'm sure they're not called plasticky bits. Yeah, I'm just picking up a little bit of a powder blue to indicate some of the highlight areas and letting that naturally kind of mix into the wetter application of the Prussian blue mix that I put down earlier. Just working with kind of angular kind of strokes. Man, without even thinking about it, I just kind of bounce back into the forehead. I feel like uh, Everything else that's starting to happen in the bottom half of the face has a certain lightness to it. And I want to see some of that coming through now into the forehead. So I'm going to just, for now, just bring a little bit of that, that lighter kind of powder blue into the forehead area to bring in some extra dimension. And I'll come back to that. I've got a funny feeling we're going to need some more highlight here still. And we'll come back into the hair as well. Okay, what are we missing? Nancy nose pads? <laughs> Is that what they're called? Good enough. If that isn't the name, that, that should be the name. Okay, groovy. I just want to kind of let my brush now, I feel like on the cheek area, I just want to just let the brush dance around a little bit. Smudge a little bit in. The um, reason why I'm doing that and I'm kind of just moving my brush around in a kind of a kind of slight zigzag motion, it just adds interest to the brush stroke um, on the page itself. So 
if everything was just kind of choppy, kind of like hard um, application lines, it'll all look the same. But as soon as you kind of break things up and you have a few areas where you definitely kind of let your brush uh, do different things, different little kind of areas of movement, it adds to the kind of, well, it adds to the ballet of the paint. So I'm just bringing in some powder blue mixed with white now and I'm starting to consider where I want highlights on the nose area to be. I don't want to get too caught up in that. I just want to have these kind of little areas of interest. Okay, we're almost at a stage where we want to get to the glasses, but uh, before that, um, I think let's do some justice to the eyes. So I'm going to choose a finer brush because I want to get into the, the whites of the eye, which I'm not going to use complete white for. Um, I'm going to mix a little bit of the powder blue now in with a touch of the Prussian blue. I'm going to work quite a dark layer down first for the whites of the eye. And then I'm going to be going over that. Um, I'll build that up with, you know, I'll build up those highlights as I need them. So essentially right now the whites of the eye are blue. Um, and then we're just going to kind of work on, we'll take it up a notch in terms of building up le levels of kind of lightness um, as, we, as we need them. So think of that for now as the kind of the shadow behind behind the light. So that's gone down. Um, and then pupil and iris are very much, because we're working with quite a black and white reference image, everything is quite dark there. So I'm going to go straight in with the Prussian blue and fill in uh, fill in the pupil iris area. Okay, that's a left in and for the right. Okay, and while I'm there with the Prussian blue, I want to go back in and refine some of the um, the area around the, the eye itself, so the eyelids, where the lashes would be, as well as the skin folds just above the actual eyelids as well. So just popping those in with a few quick kind of indicative strokes. Okay, cool. So while we're here, let's pick up on a little bit of that a little bit more of a powder blue, go back to the white of the eye. And with a fine brush, we're going to start bringing in those little areas of highlight, not covering up everything. Because remember, we want to have a three dimensional quality to the eye itself. So, um, oopsie, that was a bit of a funny streak there. I've got to go back and fix over mark. So to get that kind of three-dimensional feel, we're just going to cover up particular areas of highlights, but leaving some of that base work that we did with the initial Prussian blue. Let that be exposed. There we go, sorted. And let's pick up a little bit of white into that powder blue. Ellen, you're wondering about the teeth. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would wonder about that too. Um, you know, if I kind of feel brave enough to kind of address um, Gerard's teeth with this kind of blue, 
um, I might actually get to a point where I'll decide I'm going to finish the entire, um, go over the entire sketch with paint and then I would have to really kind of think hard about how to handle the teeth. But quite frankly, just like anything else, um, you know, don't think of them as teeth, think of them purely as areas of color. I would probably treat, um, if I had to paint the teeth, I would treat it the same way as I'm doing the eyes right now. I would build them up with different values of kind of blue, the blue tones that we've been using. Um, the benefit of only using four colors is that you don't have to become overwhelmed with all of the uh, variations of kind of color that actually do reflect in whites of teeth. We're just using four color here and in the reference image, areas around the mouth are coming out the same kind of blue as everything else. So you would address it the same way. You break it down in terms of kind of how much color you feel you need to layer here and there. And again, it's acrylic, it's forgiving. If you make a mistake, wait for it to dry. Paint over it, start again. Okay, so the eyes are starting to come together now. Still maybe a little bit on the bluish side. But um, I'm getting impatient myself. And um, I want to start attacking the glasses now. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as with everything I've done before, I'm picking up on the darkest color first, picking up on the Prussian blue. And we can see in the, in the actual frame of the glasses, there are areas where there is um, very strong highlight and very strong kind of shadow area. So focusing just on the shadow for now, I'm putting in, banging in the Prussian blue, really kind of just being almost cavalier about how that paint is coming across and being applied. So using that blue to kind of that dark color just to kind of fill in any areas of my sketch that's been um, where I've kind of dealt with shadows and midtones. Okay, give the brush a wee bit of a wipe there and bring that powder blue back in again. And I'm going to focus now on the area around where that Prussian blue went, essentially where the highlights of the glasses are. But I want the paint to feel kind of quite thick and juicy, so I'm going to be a little bit kind of testy and add a real kind of thick amount of paint in there. Not even trying to kind of be too delicate with the way that my brush is landing on the paper. Just banging in thick loopy kind of quantity of paint. Let's go all the way around here. Okay again guys we're not going for absolute perfection. The whole point of this is just have fun, experiment. So when it comes to little details like we're doing now, don't be afraid of kind of just being, being kind of quite hard with your applications, if that makes sense. Just bang on. Okay, so already glasses, something interesting starting to happen in terms of the lenses. Again, um, if you feel that the level of blue that is being applied so far is very much or too much of the same, um, which I'm kind of feeling, I'm going to just go in and just go straight white. Bring that white, I'm going to let the kind of the dirty bit of paint that was on my brush, that little bit of powder blue, stay on there. So working with a kind of dirty brush, I'm just bringing in globs of white and letting it just dance over the, the powder blue that I've put on. A 
let's get some nice kind of expressive little expressive highlights and things coming in. Nice thing about putting a big kind of gloop of paint on a very kind of thin brush like this is that if you just kind of gently kind of apply the brush to the paper, just a little bit goes on and it's kind of quite selective in its um, the shape and form. But if you want to kind of give it a bit of a heavier line, you just give it a bit more pressure. So there we go. So really just putting in these kind of indicative highlights now with quite liberal amounts of whites on the dirtier brush. Time to make some decisions. Um, I'm going to let that now dry a little bit. But what I do feel I want to do before I pull everything off and kind of reveal the last wee bit is I'm going to go in, um, bring my chisel brush back, pop a little bit of water on there, some powder blue, white, and I'm going to literally kind of just glob in now some highlights. Just smash it in, really just be kind of quite kind of cavalier with the application. So this is highlights on the forehead, looking at how dimensional shape and form in our reference image um, is captured with these kind of highlights. If you feel that you put too much on, a little bit of water on the brush it just helps thin things out. Okay, maybe a little bit too strong. Again, I think maybe I went a bit too too crazy there. Let me just bring in let me just bring in a bit of that ultramarine mixed with the white there. And it just softens some of those areas. So what I'm doing now is I'm really just looking at um, where I can add some more kind of extreme highlights just to give points of difference um, and add dimension. I'm thinking the whole time of what it's going to look like when I take this piece of paper off and see the graphite underneath. Um, so I really kind of want there to be kind of a strong tonal difference between my painting and the graphite sketch that was done originally. So I'm going in now and I'm just focusing on little areas of highlight, like where I can see in our reference image, um, there's particular strong points on eyelids and around the eyes, for example, little areas of skin. We're just adding little kind of dabs of highlights here and there, just um, essentially help bring the painting to life just create that dimension. What I do want to do, I am going to go back and add a little bit more to the whites of the eye. Um, I do feel that at this stage, we haven't gone quite white enough there yet. Okay, bringing out my thin little brush. Golly, I mean, so far, I've just used two brushes. So picking up again on the white paint, going in and grabbing in some of that detail. Let's pull in some real kind of 
some highlights now. Let's get some real pop going. So I'm getting, putting it down quite a liberal application of whites. Just here and there, just focusing kind of on the top of that portion of the eye. And then a couple of good white dots in the shadowy, sorry, in the highlights on the pupil and iris area. I'm going to do that again on the glasses. Also just kind of extreme white, focusing on where I can see there are some more kind of extreme kind of highlight points. In the reference image that gives structure to the glasses themselves. I love working with acrylic. It's they just can be so thick and juicy. You don't need to add um, fancy mediums and drying agents and things to them. They kind of just do all of, all of that work themselves. I work in oil paint as well. Um, I really like to challenge myself in working in as different, well, in as many different mediums as possible. Um, but what's great about acrylic is that you can actually accomplish a finished painting pretty quickly. It just has that kind of level of uh, haziness to it. Okay, I just want to go back in on the hair and just add some more kind of more defined kind of highlight areas. Just using a bit of creative license here just to bring in a few kind of points of contrast. Excuse me, one moment. Cheers. Right. Face is pretty much done. So um, I'm going to probably burst into tears any minute now because I'm going to challenge myself to cover up everything else very quickly and very liberally. So uh, Prussian blue, water, thinning that out, and that's going to go straight onto the background now. Big, thick, heavy brush stroke. I'm going to kind of make sure that the application is thin. I want to kind of still feel and see little areas of the patchwork that I put down with the graphite. I don't want to lose everything completely. Crikey. This just feels dangerous. Sorry, that would be the sound effect from my Labrador in the background. Oh my gosh, I'm covering up everything. Okay, any kind of scrapey sound effects that you can hear, or you can hear kind of paws trotting up and down, that's the Labr Labrador Sasha. And um, my other little boy, Dexter, he's also, he's probably fast asleep on his cushion by now. Luckily, he's the noisy one. So apologies if there's any pet noises. So feeling a little crazy there. Um, crikey. But I like it. This is the part that's fun where you kind of really just experiment and challenge yourself. Annette, you asked why I take the time for the highlights um, because everything else in the beginning was kind of kind of quite quick and sketch like. The highlights for me, um, especially when when you work on the base of a painting like this, um, you can be kind of quite liberal and quick with your kind of base and foundation work. Your highlights need a little bit more time to refine. Um, you just got to kind of allow yourself that little, that little bit of um, 
a little bit more patience there because if you kind of rush the highlights, essentially those are the things that a viewer, when they're looking at a painting, that's, that's what they see first. They're the fine details that sit on top of the larger foundation that you put down. So um, I do think that the highlights are always worth spending a little bit more time on. And they're all also one of those things that more and more as you paint, you'll keep coming back to and uh, questioning whether you've, you know, whether you've done enough, whether you can add that little bit more, that little bit more all the time, um, just to kind of uh, really kind of refine and finish finish a piece by adding all those little kind of levels of details of interest. Okay, so that was a really rambly answer, but I hope that made sense. I'm adding a bit of ultramarine, just a kind of a wash now, just to indicate um, some folds of the shirt. I was tempted to actually leave the shirt area completely white, but then I'm going to miss that kind of really kind of hard uh, diagonal stroke. Um, that's going to separate the painting from the graphite. So I'm just kind of banging in a few loose areas of ultramarine. I don't want it to look too pinstripey. Um, thank you, Renee. Um, I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a bit of powder blue in just to indicate some area of difference as well. So it's not all just kind of a highlight tone uh, mixed with a kind of a more of a medium tone. Tell you what, it's not easy talking while you're painting. <laughs> Normally I've got audio books playing or I've got kind of a Queen album blaring in the background. Um, so kind of talking it through, man, this has been a challenge. I hope I've made some sense in that, um, that you guys have been able to kind of follow along, that I haven't bored anybody to death. We're almost there for the big reveal. So I'm just putting in some very kind of expressive kind of strokes. I'm just feeling the need to kind of just see a bit, a bit of kind of big brush mark coming in on the shirt area just for fun, just for funsies. And hmm, big decision time. Am I done? Do I carry on? Um, you know what? At this point. Normally, I would be hyper perfectionist. I would keep going, but um, I would find little things to tweak. I would probably overwork it and berate myself after the fact. But uh, let's put the palettes aside. Let's call it done. And let's see what happens if we take off. Da, 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 da. Ah. I'm having, oh God, sorry, no, it's a disaster. I can't show you, it's just terrible. Sweet. How nice is that? That came out really well. For me, this is gonna be a real, a visual diary piece of um, the graphite kind of little lesson that I did with everybody today, and um, obviously the painting, uh, the painting portraits class that I'm going to be giving through the month of February. So, um, paint on the one side, sketch on the other. A big thank you to the muse, Gerard. Thank you to everybody for joining me. And um, again, please look out for um, the uh, the promo for uh, my. Um, for the painting class that's coming up. I really hope you join. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please, you can keep leaving them on the YouTube page, um, but um, I will do my best to get back to you. Alternatively, you can also message me on the Sketchy Art School. And um, yeah, this has been brilliant. What a what a cool way to spend a, spend a Saturday evening with you guys. And um, what can I say? Thank you very much.